In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to look at three ways in which you can make a title text pop by putting it in front of an object. In this case, it's going to be a background that's about the size and shape of the title. Let's look at the three ways in which you can do that. Now here I have on the screen a nice waterfall shot. And let's so, say we want to call this North Woods. I'm going to go to my title room and I'll pick a title. I'm going to go from the plain text to a custom. And then we'll scroll down alphabetically and I should be able to find my North Woods. I'll take that and drag that down on track number two. And so I have the title. It has a little bit of a shadow to it. It's kind of nice, but let's make it pop even more. The first way in which I might do that is click on the title or press the F2 function key to get into my title designer. And here I have an option called backdrop. Let's activate it by clicking on the box. And here I have several kinds of options. I can do a fit with title. I'm going to do that. I want curved edges, but I'll modify that. Starts out with a uniform color. Let's change a two color gradient. And let's start with a very dark green here. Click on OK. And the other one, let's make it a kind of a brighter green. Now I like it a little wider than the text, so I'm going to uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio and then just increase the width a little bit. And I'd like it a little less rounded, so I'm going to change my curve radius to a little more squarish there. And we'll click on OK. Now that's not bad. That definitely makes the text stand out better than it did before. But there are other ways to do the same thing, some of which have other advantages. Let's take a second option. I'm going to take my same title and put it in this segment. And we have Northwoods again. What else can we do with this? Well, I'm going to double click and get into the title designer again. And this time what I want to do is take a pre-made graphic. So I'm going to click on my object here to insert an object and I'll navigate. I'm going to use this green fade bar and click on open. And now I'm going to resize that. Now the problem I have right now is it's in front of my text. Let's fix that. So I'm going to simply take it. It's on track number two in the title designer. I'll take and hold the left mouse button, drag up, now it will be in the background. That's as easy as it is to change from one to the other. And so I want to click on my title again, and I'm going to use the arrow keys to move it a little bit, center it a little more, and then click on OK. And here I have this title. It's got a nice uh, fade in and fade out on left and right. It's kind of darker green in the middle and lighter on the edges. But in order to do this, using this method, you need to have a separate graphic that you've created. There's some nice things about it, but is there yet another way? There is. Let's try way number three. We're going to take our Northwoods title and drag it down again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to use our color boards. Now to use a color board, I have to be on a higher track than my title in the default stacking order. So I'm going to take this and drag it down one track lower. And we'll put a color board behind it. So what I need to do is move in to my media room. And then I need to click on the blue arrow to expand the sections. I'm going to click color boards. Now I want a gradient. It really doesn't matter what gradient I pick, but I need a gradient category. So I'm going to click here so I see all the gradients. I'll just take this one and drag it down. Now it covers the entire screen. Let's double click. That will open up my PIP designer. We're going to turn off maintain aspect ratio. 
and we're going to make it just about the right size for my element here. Let me click on OK. Now, I have one problem. The color doesn't match. Let me show you how to do that. Unfortunately, it's not intuitive. I need to right click on my color board and ch click on Change Color. Now, this is nice because it gives me multiple color stops. So let's take uh, one in the middle and we'll do a dark green. And I'll do another one somewhere close to the middle. A double click or I can click the plus. Then we'll add one. And we'll take this dark green again. And I can add as many color stops as I desire. Put them wherever I like. And on the outside, what I want to do is use a lighter green. And I'll change the color of the end stop. You must have a stop on the end, the left and right. And let's see if that looks a little better. We can enlarge that. We can change the gradient direction. We could try a different type of gradient. There's a more oval type. I'll, I'll save that for now. And We'll click on OK. I'm going to move back into my PIP Designer. And we're going to change this a little bit. Let's uh, dial the opacity back so we can see exactly what size we want. We'll make it smaller. And I'll use my arrow keys to again to move it that way. We'll dial the opacity back up. I think I want to move the, the green the other direction. I'll click on OK. One more tweak here. We're going to right click and go do change color. Now we'll change the gradient direction 90 degrees. And I think I'll widen it so it's behind the words a little more. Click on OK. Now I can also take this object and change the opacity or the blending mode if I want to, to modify it even more. I could add a border, a reflection, a fade, all kinds of other things, but we won't in this lesson. So this is a third option. It's kind of a compromise between the second, which is a dedicated image, and this one, which isn't too bad. And then we have our default, where we use the backdrop that's built into the Title Designer. But those give you different options on how you can accomplish a similar kind of task, each with its own advantages and disadvantages, by using a background in PowerDirector.